Today I'm going over week eight of my cutting phase coached by Paul Ravella. Hey, this is Colin DeWay. If you are new here and you want to master your metabolism and get in the best shape of your life, start by subscribing now and click on that bell notification so you don't miss anything. So what I typically do on Saturday is I bounce back and forth every two weeks between my cutting series and my client Vivian's reverse dieting series. However, I'm going to do my series again this week just because Vivian's reverse diet series doesn't really have a whole lot to talk about right now. Everything is pretty steady and there really isn't much to report, but there's a lot of stuff going on with my cut. By the way, if you're new here, the point of these updates is to help show you what an actual cut and an actual reverse dieting phase can look like. So I document the adjustments we make, why we make them, how we make them, and I talk a lot about the mindset between each phase and some of the things that you need to watch out for. So if you've missed a lot and you're interested, I do have a playlist for both series on my channel page. So if you go there, find that playlist, you can watch from start to finish. Especially if you're more curious about reverse dieting, there's a lot of helpful information in the first handful of videos in the client reverse diet series. So I would definitely check that out especially if you struggle with your relationship with food. Anyway, let's get into my cut for week eight, but make sure you stick around to the end of the video because that's when I'm gonna talk about the changes that were made this week. Yes, there are changes being made this week. But I'll tell you what, it has been a bit of a challenging week for me. This is because I have suffered an injury and I have some sort of abdominal strain that has really hindered my training the last week. And the crazy part is, I literally have no clue how it happened. I seriously just woke up one morning, it was a little bit tender, and as the day progressed, it just continued to get worse and worse. I did have legs to train that day, and it actually wasn't too bad. I was just a little bit cautious to make sure I didn't do anything bad, but I was able to get through my session okay. And the next day, things were pretty much the same, and I actually had a rest day that day so I figured I'd probably be good to go however when I went to train the next day and did chest and back it was clear that something was not good I did my best to get through that session and try not to make things worse. I made sure I wasn't really bracing my core, which isn't exactly optimal for lifting weights, but I wanted to make sure I got something in, but didn't make anything worse. Unfortunately, I did get up the next day and I think I did make it worse because it was extremely sore that day. So I got a hold of Paul and we decided that I needed to take at least two or three days off completely from the gym and just make sure that I really didn't use my abs and make sure that I allow it to rest and recover and heal up. And there really wasn't much I could do to train around it because it's pretty hard to do anything with without at least utilizing your core a little bit. So I ended up taking Friday and Saturday off completely, rested, iced, took ibuprofen, and thankfully come Saturday, it was actually feeling quite a bit better, and then Sunday, it was feeling much better. Now Sunday, it still wasn't fully healed, but I felt like it was good enough that I could go in and just chase like a quick arm pump and do it light and just make sure I could make up the cardio that I had missed and stuff like that. So I went in and things went okay. Since then, I've been able to train. I just have not been able to do the full workload that I normally would do, so I'm just backing off the weight a little bit, not pushing too hard. Anything that requires a lot more core work, such as squats and deadlifts, are out, but I'm least able to get in there and do something. And I will continue to do this until I feel like I'm 100% and not risking further injury. Now the reason I'm telling you this isn't for any kind of sympathy or anything, it's just that injuries are a part of the process, right? It's a part of this game that we play and you're going to deal with it from time to time. The point is, if you're dealing with something that's an obvious injury, you need to play it smart and back off and make sure you don't make things worse. I've been lifting consistently for 10 years now. In the past, I would have pushed it. I did it all the time and I would have made things worse. With something like this by backing off and playing it smart it's probably still going to take a couple weeks to fully heal but at least it will heal and i'll be back into the swing of things after that whereas if you push when you shouldn't and you make things worse this is how you end up out for several weeks or even several months and trust me I know. Even in something like contest prep, we still have to be smart. And one thing that's really helped me is now that I have a better understanding of what it takes to really lose muscle, I don't have this big fear of taking a few days off and it just being gone. Because in reality, especially for someone with a lot of training experience, it takes about three weeks for you to actually lose muscle mass. You will certainly lose strength a lot faster than that, but that's all neural and it'll come back fast too. But actual muscle tissue is pretty dang resilient. So why jeopardize something really bad happening by pushing when you shouldn't. So you may have to take a few days off, but you're not going to lose any muscle during that time. But if you push when you shouldn't and you end up out for several weeks or months, that's when you really get set back. With that being said though, I do think I need to say this real quick. I'm actually all for staying active, working around injuries, doing what you can and getting into the gym and not just staying out every time something happens. But there's a big difference between little nagging injuries here and there and some aches and pains and a serious injury. And it was clear to me that this was something that was serious and if I didn't take it seriously, it would bite me in the butt hard. So make sure 
sure you know the difference and are honest with yourself if it's something that's serious or something that you can train through. Anyway, when it comes to macros, this is where Paul's approach of having training day and non-training day macros is actually pretty beneficial. And I'll be perfectly honest with you, I'm actually not that big of a fan of the training and non-training day macros. I would personally just rather balance out the macros for the week and then add any refeeds you might have. I just like it for simplicity's sake. But in this case, since I was out of the gym when I normally wouldn't be, which is very rare for me, I simply just switched to my non-training day macros and didn't even have to think about it. That being said, if you are someone who likes to eat the same macros per day, this is how I would typically recommend doing things if you had to take a day off from the gym. Just drop your carbs by about 10 to 15%. In some cases, they might drop fat by 10% as well, but carbs are the big thing that are used in training, so it just makes sense to take carbs away if you aren't training. Now, as far as weight goes, I didn't see much change this week, only losing about 0.4 pounds on average for the week. Not only that, but if you look back over the last 17 days, my weight has been pretty dang stable for most of that time. So with that, Paul decided it was time to make some changes and get that fat loss going a little bit better. Not only did he make changes to my training and non-training day macros, but he actually added in a refeed this week, which we hadn't been doing prior. As far as the actual changes made, he basically left my protein and my fat the same, but took away 30 grams of carbs from both my training and non-training day macros. And then as far as the refeed day goes, he dropped my protein down by 10, and then increased my carbs so that they were up to 360 grams for that day. This drop in protein in a refeed is something that I often do with people as well, and I quite commonly get the question, why would protein go down if we're trying to eat more calories? Which is a great question, but the reason we do it sometimes is because carbs are protein sparing. So if you have more carbs, you have less need for more protein. So especially in my case, when protein is already well above the one gram per pound of weight, it just makes sense to allow for a little bit more carbs. Anyway, if you were to add up the total macros and calories from each week, from last week to this week, the difference between a whole week is an average of 93 calories less per day with these changes. Plus on top of that, he gave me an extra five minutes of cardio to do for each session. I'm currently doing five 15 minute sessions for the week. So now it's five 20 minute sessions, which brings me up to hundred total minutes for the week. The good news is I really haven't been dealing with any real hunger and my energy levels have been pretty good. So we'll see if these adjustments change anything, but I think at this point I'm probably gonna be pretty good, or at least I hope. But my calories are still in a pretty good spot considering how lean I am. The only real negative that I've been experiencing so far is I just am not sleeping very very well, I just can't seem to get more than about six hours of sleep. I'm falling asleep fine and I'm sleeping fine, but I just wake up early and can't go back to sleep. My guess is this is just due to being as lean as I am. And it's just something that you have to expect at a certain point of getting pretty lean is sleep is going to start to suffer. But hey, on the plus side, I'm being much more productive in the mornings now. So I'm getting stuff done. So bright side to everything, right? But what I think I might do is start trying Core Nutritionals ZZZ. I've never tried it before and I've heard really good things. So it might be worth a shot. By the way, if you're interested in a supplement that has actually been shown by science to reduce stress, reduce cortisol, improve energy levels, and can even aid in fat loss. Make sure you check out this video and I will cover exactly what that is.